When I'm inter on interviews, a lot of people ask me, what does a writer bring to the table for a business? In this video, I'm going to explain the many skills a writer like myself brings to the table for a business. What a lot of people don't understand is that writing is not just a skill, it's a craft, and it's something like, you know, like your skilled tradesman, like your woodworker, your plumber, your carpenter, your electrician. It is a skill that is developed over time and you get better at it as you continue to work with it. And the most skilled writers usually know different styles of writing, different techniques of writing, and they know how to write different things to persuade people to take action in certain ways. Like your copywriter knows how to write good copy, that writes, they know how to write an ad to persuade you to buy something. Your novelist knows how to write a good story that compels you to keep reading more and more of the story until you finish the novel. And your nonfiction writer knows how to convey information in a simple fashion so that even the most complex complex um, things can be simplified. And those are some of the skills that I have gained over the last 21 years as a professional writer a novelist, a screenwriter, and a nonfiction writer. And along with those skills, um, I have gained other, other skills that are business related as well. Um, as a novelist, I have to do a lot of planning, um, outlining novels, you know, the plot, um, constructing the structure of the story from the beginning to the middle to the end. Um, and I have to create the form with the characters. I have to create all those characters and what their motivations are, what their ideas are, what the goals are. Um, it's the same thing as a business report. You have to set your goal of what you intend to, what statements you want to make, um, and what goals you want to set, and what direction you want to go in, and how you want to go about implementing something. Same thing is with, with the same approach is used in a novel when you're doing a, a, a novel. Um, you're setting the story, plot structure, um, of what the story is about, you're establishing who the main character is, you're establishing what they want, you're establishing what obstacles are going to be in the, in the main character's way um, in terms of conflict, and then you're establishing the plot line which um, goes from you know the inciting incident to the first plot point, and then moving further along to the second plot point to the climax, and then the conclusion, and that all requires a lot of planning, a lot of organizing, and it requires you to understand um, basic story paradigm and setting a direction, setting goals for yourself, and having um, maintaining a um, maintaining a level of quality while you're doing this. And also, this is also another thing writers have to do um, with nonfiction as well. We have to um, set up what is our primary argument. Um, for a book, you know, what information, what are we trying to teach the reader um, when we're putting a story, when we're putting a nonfiction book together, um, gathering the, re doing the research to reinforce our arguments, and then setting, putting this book together to um, present this information and provide people with um, a solution or breaking things down so that people can understand it. This is something that I've had to do with the Simp Trilogy of books and the Why 70% of Black Women Are Single book, I had to break the, I had to do the research, um, put my point, my thesis up, um, up front, um, gather um, more information to reinforce my arguments, and then put it together in an easy to read format that allows people to easily understand, you know, the point I'm trying to make, and finding information to reinforce those arguments and then writing it in such a way that it's just easy to read and anybody can understand. And those are some of the skills that, you know, a writer like myself has. And in addition to those skills, you know, you have to do a lot, again, you have to do a lot of planning because um, when you're a writer, you have to do a lot of research to reinforce all the points you're trying to make. Um, even when there's fiction, nonfiction, screenplays, teleplays, you have to have facts to back up all of your information when you're when you're telling when you when you're when you're writing anything 
And um, that requires, again, more planning, more organizing. And you have to really have a idea of what you want to do and a direction that you want to go in. And that's some of, one of the things writers have to do. And that's one of the skills that a writer brings to the table for other businesses is that they're very, that like a writer like myself, I'm a very good planner. I'm a very good organizer. Um, I make, I have, um, I have to set things up and before I write a single word of it, I have to do outlines and, you know, set up a, what I want to, when I want, what I want to convey in a story, what reasons, what characters have to have reasons and motivations for what they want to do and everything has to follow a straight line and sometimes the characters will speak to you and then you they will make you change course on things but that that's also part of storytelling and that's why it is a craft and it takes skill and then there's the other part of writing after you finish writing the draft what you have to do there's another set of skills that involve with the editing which require you to have good analytical skills good attention to detail um again more organizational skills proofreading skills and it requires a lot of critical thinking when you're doing these, doing the editing process because sometimes you can miss a little detail, you can miss an error here or there, and then you have to go over it again um, before it's published. And that's another thing that I have to do as, as um, a writer and a publisher is I have to do a lot of um, proofreading and re-editing and, you know, examining the material and make sure that every detail is correct before, you know, the book goes to print or it goes gets published on an e-publisher like Amazon's Kindle or Smashwords or Barnes & Noble's Nook. That requires a lot of organization, a lot of management skills. Um, you know, you have to manage time, you have to manage a schedule, and that's another thing that I have to do when I'm doing publishing is that it's not just writing the stories, you have to maintain the uh, schedule for the editing of these books once they're finished. Um, and a schedule for when they're going to be released and a schedule for promotion and pre-promotion and that all again requires you know good time management skills good organizational skills and good communication skills um that's that's something i've had to you know develop over over time uh, over the last couple of years um trying to work with work, work when i was working with an artist on the isis rather the God, cyber goddess cover i had to you know um, do business correspondence and I had to do communication to get that cover um, finished and that's another skill that you have to do is, is you have to have really good communication skills um, and it's a whole lot of skills and it's a whole lot of skills because this is this is a what a lot of people don't they think is just you know guys sitting in a Starbucks in front of a laptop and that's not what being a writer is about and that's not what being a self-publisher is about or a publisher with an imprint like my SJS Direct imprint. There's a lot of management that goes into it. Um, there's a lot of, again, like I said before, a lot of business planning, a lot of organization. And a lot of business owners, they don't understand this. When I go to the job interview, they would think that, you know, again, he gets up at 11 o'clock, he's sleeping all day. This is not what writers do. Um, I am up at 6 or 7 a.m. sometimes doing editing, and then I don't go to bed sometimes when until 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning because I'm fin writing new chapters, and I also have I also manage a blog on top of this, um, the www.seansjames.blogspot.com. I manage that blog as well, and I write three blogs a week in addition to the books that I was I produce. Um, in 2013, I produced, published over 13 paperbacks and ebooks, and I had to maintain a really tight schedule to produce books for each quarter. Um, and people don't don't know that 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 that, that I had pulp, that I was maintaining a schedule, you know, because I was maintaining making sure that books were coming out for certain holiday periods, like the summer reading season, which is a big season. That's how you get a lot of new readers. Um, the Christmas season, and I have different campaigns for those seasons. Like I have books, like because there's something called catalog management that I do with the publications that I have um, published previously, and the ones that I'm publishing currently. I I put different books like to get new readers. I'll put a book up on the Amazon KDP Select um, 
or what they call Kindle Unlimited these days. Um, I'll put up a free book in the hopes of getting people to buy other books, and where I'll do something like my summer young adult reading campaign where I specifically craft books for readers, um, you know, teens, tweens, and kids to keep them reading during the summer. So I do different books, and I post them up for free on Smashwords. And those promotional campaigns um, are designed so that I can get new readers, and I strategically plan them deliberately so that I can try to reach new readers. And a lot of people don't understand. They, don't, they just think, you know, books come out, they get published. No, they come, to, they get published on a schedule, they get published with a plan, and they get published with the goal of hoping that get young people to buy more books. And this is a business, um, it's a hobby for me and a business at the same time, something that I came out of a hobby. And it, it requires a lot of different business skills. And I have a degree in business and I use that degree almost every day and I use everything that I learned from college to you know, maintain the maintain my my SJS Direct catalog, um, maintain the schedule of books that I'm doing, maintain the plans for books that I'm writing, and to keep things you know organized and efficient. And I've been doing this since 2009 when I established the SJS Direct imprint, um, and I've been trying to keep it flowing. And you know, I mean, I've had some hiccups here and there. You know, I had a quality control issue in 2013 with a couple of books, but I managed to pull it back together as a manager. I managed to, you know, take, sometimes I had to take books off the line out of, um, and then redo, revise them, rewrite them, and clean them up. And I have to also do other things like customer service. You know, sometimes I'll get a letter from somebody or an email from somebody regarding a book, or uh, like lately I've been trying to deal with this issue of covers, um, because a lot of people complain that, you know, the covers aren't um, visually flattering for them, and I've been trying to do things like, you know, like the ISIS series Kickstarter and the new one that I'm planning, um, launching in a couple of weeks, to address these issues. And that's also part of what a writer has to do, you know, a writer and a publisher has to do what they bring to a table to a business because that's customer service right there. You're trying to listen to the customer. You're trying to give them the best quality product possible. And, you know, you're trying to, you know, keep giving, trying to meet the needs of the customer. I'm trying to satisfy the needs of the customer and give them the best quality product possible because I really want the reader to have a great reading experience. Um, I go out of my, I make every effort to make every SJS Direct book the best possible quality it can be. I know that sometimes there's an error here or there, but I'm, I'm again, I work on all of these books right by myself. Um and it, it's a challenge to get all of these books out every year but I somehow I managed to do it all and this is some, this is some of the skills that I would offer an employer as a if I ever work for one, another one um, and this is what I bring to the table I mean I have good management skills good time management skills um, I've managed a catalog of over 40 book titles and I'm getting ready to put out publish Another couple coming this summer. I think about I have two the ISIS East Team crossover and the Stop Simp in second edition. That's what's planned to come out this summer. Um, my friend Lawrence Cherry, he is getting ready to do a follow up book to commencement. He's just finished the first draft and that may be coming out. Um, if anybody's a commencement fan, I just want you to know uh, the, the follow up to commencement may be coming out um, the third part of the third one is coming out. I know a lot of people aren't are talked about commencement and but it may be coming out this, this summer. Um, it's tentative, it's not guaranteed but it may be coming out. And I do have, uh, I might have another um, you know, ISIS series book. I'm working on doing some research on um, you know um, I got an idea that's inspired by the movie Imitation of Life, and that might become an ISIS series story. Um, it's an idea I have. It may be coming out. But all of these things require, they requires a lot of, again, organization, research, planning. Um, you have to really understand the skill of writing and the craft of writing. A lot of people don't understand that, you know, storytelling is a craft, and writing is a skill, and, it, it, and I'll 
I can explain that it's the difference between the two because um, the skill of writing comes from learning basic technique um, and you know how to put reasons behind your arguments in, in, in your essays and in your term papers and that's a, that takes time for you to build that into a skill so that eventually you can use it in things like articles or research papers or even nonfiction books that that's a skill but the cra writing is a craft in that you have to understand you know wh what a story is what story models are you know um, story paradigms how there's you know there's three act stories there's five act stories um, sometimes there's a one act story um, and you have to know how to put things together within these paradigms so that the reader gets the best quality reading experience and also when the same thing with nonfiction you have to understand how to put things together so pe you can convey the information to the reader in the most simplistic fashion so that they can understand it um, again this all takes skill and this is all skill that I have learned over the last you know 21 22 years I mean I've been writing since I was nine years old but when I came out of college that's when I really started learning the skill and the craft of writing and I've been I've read all some of the great books I've read *The Drunk and White um, Elements of Style I've read Sid Field's screenplay Robert McKee's story um, I've read you know countless fiction books um, countless nonfiction books lots of articles on the web about writing and I've really built up a high quality a lot of skills in writing and I had this is and building these skills up have helped me you know work in different jobs you know like when I was working at the strife program job readiness I was a project coordinator helping them implement a plan to get their increase their resources to help them recruit homeless adults um, that was 15 years ago but you know that I, I was able to you know really use all those right skills that I got as a writer and as a guy with a degree in business towards um, achieving a lot of those goals through that AmeriCorps project and I also use those same skills in building up my SJS Direct imprint and marketing and promoting books and again that's another bit skill that I bring to the table is good marketing because um, I'm able to reach readers all over the world not just in the United States not just in the black community I have reached readers in again Italy Japan um, the UK Australia um, Germany France Spain and that's with the books and with the blog the blog is um, inching closer and closer to a million hits um, www.seansjames.blogspot.com again that also requires a lot of management because I do two to three blogs a week um, and you, you have to manage a schedule you have to find topics you want to talk about and that takes time and that takes organization I know I keep saying organization but that's one of the things that I have to do in building up you know the SJS direct imprint trying to reach the readers I also do a lot of marketing on Facebook and Twitter and I've recently this is why I'm doing videos because I'm branching out into doing YouTube videos um and I'm trying to do other things I'm trying to reach readers in other areas and these are some of the skills that I bring to the table because it requires a lot of management a lot of a lot of um again communication a lot of organization a lot of planning and you have to set goals for what you want to do and I do that every year with an initial blog um, I will talk about the goals I wanted to set and for out of the five out of six years that I've done this um, blog on a regular basis every goal I set I pretty much met um, that I plan to meet and I met some that I didn't plan to meet um, but I always try to find a way to solve a problem that's, that's part of what management is that's part of what I learned doing management is that management is about solving problems not sweeping them under the rug it's about finding constructive solutions that help everyone move forward and that's one of the things that I try to do with the SJS Direct imprint and the mission of the SJS Direct is you know to create positive stories about the African American experience but lately I've been branching out into other areas and trying to help people improve the quality of their lives that's why I do a lot of different blogs on different topics and I've branched out into doing nonfiction because a lot of the blogs I did were helping people and helping them take their lives to the next level and that's some of the stuff that I have to offer you know 
an employer. Um, I've been out of work for a while, but I continue to work on my own, um, building up this SJS Direct imprint and trying to reach readers all over the world. And th this is something I'm doing on my own, and it shows that I can work on my own. And you know, I'm really motivated to you know do the best quality job possible. And this is what I can do for an employer. And this is what um, I'm doing for myself right now. And this is, again, I can do this for you as well. And, I again, I have a lot to offer employers, but they just, um, a lot of employers, what they do is they're still thinking in the box. And what I find is you really have to come out of the box and try to do things differently. And sometimes a different um, view of things can give you a fresh perspective and, you know, really help you take your business to the next level. And that's one of the things I'm trying to do with the SJS Directing Burn. I'm trying to take it to the next level. And I'd like to take one of these employers to the next level by trying to do something different, something out of the box, something unique, you know. And really, this is what I bring to the table um, all the time. I'm very creative. These action figures you see here, I made all of those myself. I rooted the hair. I made the outfits, everything. I've, and I, and this is in addition to the books that I've published. These are all my books right here um, on display. I keep them. I have several. I have, these are almost all the books I have um, here. All the books I published over the last five or six years. I mean, I did publish ISIS, the first ISIS book in 2002. I had to take a report. I had to um, pull things back because I didn't have any money for a long t until about 2008. But since I lost my job in 2008, I've been trying to build the SJS Direct imprint up and trying to take it to the next level and trying to reach readers all over the world. And I'm still trying to do this on a limited income. Um, and I'm trying to find another job so that I can continue publishing books and trying to improve the quality, you know. I want to give readers those great covers like I did for Isis rather than Saad Begadis, the great cover Bill Wacko produced. I would really like to work with him again. I would like to do more um, different types of books. I would like to do different types of promotion. I would like to try to do, you know, some trade shows like Com New York Comic Con or um, Black Expo or Circle of Sisters. I would like to do those in the future, but I really do need a day job in order to raise the funds to do this. Um, and this is, this again, this is what I bring to the table. I do set long-term goals. This, these are, those are some of the long-term goals I have planned and some of the long-term goals I would like to implement. And this is what I would do for an employer during the day while I'm building the SJS imprint on weekends and after that's all I have to say for this video I hope you understand what a writer brings to the table in terms of skill and craft and business experience and, and talent and you can comment and give me some feedback and even subscribe to this channel if you'd like